Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm delighted to welcome you here to this combined ordinary general shareholders meeting for AXA as I lead as chairman and CEO of that company with uh, Mr. Norbert Dontresong, uh, vice chairman of the board of directors, with Mr. Dennis Duverne, the deputy CEO, with uh, Madame Veronique Vale, who's a member of the management committee and director of group operations, Mr. Jean-Laurent Granier is a member of the management committee, uh, general manager of uh, the Latin American and Mediterranean region, and uh, chairman and CEO of AXA Global PNC, Mr. Gerard Harlan, who's the financial director of the group and member of the executive committee, and also Mr. Nicholas Morrow, member of the management committee and uh, chairman and CEO of AXA France. I'd like to say that all non-shareholders are in this auditorium, and as such, our uh, general shareholders meeting is therefore a public event uh, and open to the public, and the debates and discussions will be posted on our website, axa.com. So now we're going to be moving to the uh, formalities and attended upon opening this session and establishing the steering committee. This ordinary shareholders meeting is, uh, has been convened for the first time. It's been convened pursuant to legal provisions in a notification of the meeting, appeared on the 22nd of February 2013, appeared in the BALO, and a uh, notification of the meeting that appeared in the same publication on the 22nd of March 2013, as well as the uh, legal announcement gazette, the Petit uh, Affiche, on the 22nd of March 2013. I have been informed that the meeting may now deliberate in its ordinary and uh, extraordinary form. 10,000 shareholders are present, 1,400,000. Uh, million uh, shares, 61% of total shareholders having voting rights, 859 million votes, 65.45% 65 65 of total votes. So the quorum, the, I will have you know the final quorum before the voting of the resolutions once all the initiatives taken up by the president uh, shareholders or represented shareholders once they have been properly counted. And I'd like to call upon uh, the uh, shareholders holding the greatest number of votes. AXA Insurance Eard Mutual, represented by Mr. Claude Bebiard. Uh, member of the board. He is seated in the first row. And also uh, company AXA Assurance V Mutuel, represented by Mr. Octave Monset, a uh, member of the board of that company as well. I'd like to thank them for their agreement. And I suggest that uh, be appointed as secretary to this meeting, Mr. Dennis Duverne. The statutory auditors have been convened, uh, consonant with the law, by uh, letter. And they are here today. We have Mr. Michel Lafosse, who represents, who's representing uh, Pri PricewaterhouseCoopers audit. And uh, he is on my right in the third or fourth row. We also have next to him Mr. Gilles Magnon, who represents Cabinet Mazers. Uh, I am making available to the meeting all legal documents. All shareholders who have requested so have received documents and information provided for by the law and have been able to become mindful of said documents at the head office or over their company website. I'd like to pay uh, particular greetings to the members of the board of directors who are attending this meeting and a particular, in particular three people, Mr. Anthony Hamilton, who has been a member of the board for a number of years. And this is his last uh, shareholders meeting as a board member because he doesn't wish to seek a re-election to his office. I'd like to thank him for all the remarkable input he's provided to the company throughout all these years. I'd also like to pay tribute to Madame Oppenheimer, who is uh, putting herself forward. Uh, Dina Oppenheimer, and you will see her career uh, presents succinctly in a film later on. We also have Paul Hermelin, who is putting himself forward as a member of the board, and he is sitting in the first rank. So in this combined ordinary shareholders meeting, 
we want to call upon you to uh, make pronouncements upon 11 ordinary resolutions and 13 extraordinary resolutions. Um, I'm not going to read uh, in extenso this program. Uh, I'll ask the meeting to give me leave to do that and uh, enable the, pro therefore, the program, the, or the agenda is simply to feature on the screens behind me. I would also call upon you uh, to give me leave not to read uh, the report of the he Board of Directors. It features in the 2012 annual report, and it's also available at the head office of our company, and uh, at your request can be sent to you, or uh, you can have it upon leaving the auditorium. Uh, we will be using electronic voting. Uh, and the methods for this will be presented to you before we move to voting the resolutions. What I suggest is without further ado, to we move to the presentations. Notre monde se transforme, économie, démographie, environnement, mode de vie. Les transformations sont multiples et touchent tous les domaines. Imaginez. Imaginez un monde où il serait possible de mieux se protéger des aléas climatiques. Imaginez un monde où une fille sur deux atteindrait l'âge de 100 ans. Un monde où on aurait gagné 30 années d'espérance de vie en 30 ans. Imaginez des centaines de millions de personnes dans les pays émergents qui accèdent à un meilleur niveau de vie, de soins, d'éducation. Imaginez un monde fondé sur le partage des connaissances, un monde hyper connecté qui compterait 2,3 milliards d'internautes sur tous les continents. Imaginez. Ce monde existe. Ce monde, c'est aujourd'hui. Ce monde se transforme. Risques socio-économiques liés à l'environnement, à la personne. Les hommes doivent maintenant faire face à des risques nouveaux, différents par leur nature, leur fréquence, leur intensité et les réponses à apporter. Pour répondre à ces défis, nous engageons notre transformation. Nous transformons notre relation avec la société en maîtrisant mieux nos impacts sur l'environnement, en accompagnant les populations les plus vulnérables pour améliorer la confiance sur le long terme. Nous transformons notre relation avec nos clients et partenaires en utilisant le digital pour plus de services personnalisés, en enrichissant notre savoir-faire par du savoir-être pour devenir plus agile et efficace. Pour permettre à nos clients d'avancer en confiance, nous poursuivons notre transformation. En réinventant notre métier jour après jour, imaginons ensemble comment bâtir une société plus sûre. So this brief uh, film has given you an inkling, I think, into what, what are the major trends that are unfolding that we need to take on board in our businesses. And I'd like to share with you a certain number of ways of an analyzing the year that's just gone by. This film, I think, has given you a swift inkling into how the world is changing and what are the characteristics of those changes. And here are the salient features uh, for our companies. Uh, these are opportunities if we can grasp them, but there, but there could also be threats if we don't respond. The first point, the political and economic emergence of a new world, including a number of countries that are taking a particular stance in the market and that are uh, taking up an increasing slice of the cake of uh, world growth. So we need to take up a stance if we want to see our grow, uh, um, group growing and prospering in the future. The second major trend is that of uh, people living longer. And I think I've said this actually last year. A baby who's born today will, leave, will live six hours more than a baby uh, born yesterday. There's no break in this upward climb in life expectancy. It's an opportunity for us because we protect our customers in their, in their lives, but it could also be a threat if we don't know how to properly gauge uh, this change. Climate change 
in all our uh, PNC activities. Uh, this is a major opportunity because this is something that can enable us to make our customers mindful in a more acute fashion of what the risks are that they may be encountering, but also risk for our financials. Because if we don't know how to properly gauge this trend, if in a certain number of cases we can't prevent uh, things occurring or nip the consequences in the bud, we will be significantly impacted, as borne out by the increasing number of uh, claims stemming from, over the over last few years, claims from natural disasters. Now, more recent changes, but no less de-seated. Volatility, economic volatility, but also financial market volatility. Over the last few years in the markets, and particularly since the beginning of this century, we're seeing a volatility in the in the variations of ups uh, of peaks and troughs. More than so, more so in the past. This impacts our income statements. Our financial results, our products, the risks that we need to mitigate, and also the profiles of our policyholders. We need to take that on board. Last point, by no means the least, uh, digitalization, uh, which means in all the way that we operate. This uh, is part of the internet revolution. For all social and economic aspects, this probably equates to the invention of the printing press in the Middle Ages, the advent of Internet, and brings with it sustainable, very complex changes, relationships with consumers, uh, customers, and uh, shareholders. But also it involves um, how competitive we can be in the future. So this world is in flux, it's changing. Where do we stand and where are we going? Currently, we have uh, a presence in 57 countries in the world, and you'll see that we've cemented that position in a number of those countries over the last few years. And in the fourth consecutive year, we are uh, ranked first in the insurance business in the world. AXA uh, is 25 years under its belt, and in that space of time, it's become ranked first. And it has entrenched itself in that position as first. It is a major competitive advantage for us in emerging markets particularly, and we're going to be fighting tooth and nail to retain that pole position. More than three hundred more than one thousand more than one million customers, which shows that in our offerings our position is good, even though some markets prove difficult. 160,000 employees, if we include in that figure the uh, agents, uh, tied agents and their employees, uh, we have 360, uh, we have these 160,000 uh, employees around the world who are defending AXA, and then we also have 360,000 individual shareholders. What were the salient features of fiscal year 2012? I won't uh, get into the financials because they'll be presented later on by uh, Denis Duvern. I'd just like to confine myself to the salient features, the high points, and that dovetail with our strategy and really bears testimony to the deep-seated transformation that we're observing within the group. Over the, over the year, we've continued our development in emerging uh, countries. Now, AXA oh, is a more recent player than others, and we started off lagging behind the rest, perhaps. These others didn't have to cover the ground that we had to in order to reach a critical mass in these mature markets. But I would say we have uh, caught up that lost time. I think we've done that pretty well. And here we've got a list of a certain number of uh, operations that are quite weighty that have been run since the beginning of 2012, particularly in Asia. In March, for example, we were able to acquire uh, PNC uh, activities belonging to HSBC Hong, from Hong, po, Hong, Hong Kong and Singapore and Mexico, which meant that we're the first PNC, or well, leading PNC, Hong Kong and Singaporean player. We were able to beef up our position in Mexico, where we already held pole position in, in uh, June. We transformed the partnership we had in life insurance in China to tie up with the leading uh, Chinese uh, bank, which is also the leading world bank, 300 million customers. Uh, we are minor. We have a minority stake, but we do uh, sit on the board of that company, and this turnover is fleshing out quite nicely. Thank you very much. Uh, and then in other 
major points since the beginning of the year. We've been able to sell a portfolio of assets in the U.S., a portfolio which is a legacy portfolio whose uh, prospects for growth was very diminished. And we've reinvested part of that money, only last week for that matter, to take up 50% equity stake in an insurer in a in a PNC a company in China called Changping, and by doing so, we are, we become the leading uh, PNC international. PNC player in the Chinese domestic market. We believe this company will be posting fantastic growth prospects, particularly with regard to direct insurance provision. I forgot a smaller operation, but still very interesting, which presses out our, uh, our presence in Korea. Uh, and all this has been done while properly adhering to responsible investment and sustainable development because. In addition to this, and I'll return to this point later on, we've signed up to a number of, of commitments in that realm. With regard to mobility and fluidity, or capital fluidity, independent of the uh, US operation I mentioned a moment ago, a few weeks back, we uh, let go private equity uh, control. Uh, we ceded the control to a management company, which means uh, that they are now managing those assets. Um, and we think that's, that's wholly satisfactory. As you can see, mobility, uh, agility, and I'll return to those points later on. Now, l this mobility, this flexibility from a geographical perspective means that we can be focused on our core businesses. And I believe this is one of the reasons why we're seeing such a good, um, a good uh, sense of security for the group to churn out positive results. If you look at the contribution to the underlying earnings of the group, you can see that we've got three columns here. And the, obviously, the weightings can shift from one year to the next. But basically, they're of equal importance. We've got PNC, which weighs in for just a little over 40% of the total pie. We've got protection health. So this is insurance for individuals, a little more than 30%. And then we've got uh, um, uh, asset uh, management and savings. It was put under pressure by the recent cre crises and low interest rates. This is just shy of, say, of a quarter of the total. We've got three priorities, as I uh, said initially, in order to pursue our growth and to reach our ambition AXA uh, objectives being selective in our businesses, uh, acceleration in a certain number of areas and in product lines, and also effectiveness in terms of m operational management, and in particular in, with regard to costs. And why this selectiveness approach? Well, because we want to deploy resources that we have, be they human or financial, in the best possible fashion. Opportunities in the world are numerous, but the legacy positions uh, that we hold aren't necessarily always the best suited. So when uh, tension is high, you need always to ask yourself the question whether the, the activities that you're running are always the right ones. Should you flesh out more? Should you sign up to more? And I think um, this bears testimony to what we've done. This is true for a geographical stance as much for uh, m distribution or product line exposure. Acceleration, this is something I mentioned earlier on with regard, with regard to the need to flesh out our presence in the emerging markets. It's also part and parcel of what we mean by digitalization. Uh, many businesses are being transformed extremely quickly by the advent of internet in, uh, as an interface with customers or in industrial processes per se. Just look around yourselves. A hotel, uh, catering, uh, travel industry, bookshops, they're seeing massive upheaval, upheavals, and it will reach our door sooner or later. So we need to get in there a early and not turn our back on it, on, on it. We need to make sure that we uh, modernize our distribution network. They need to be multi-access. And we also need to uh, make sure that we're doing the same thing with our consumers. Uh, effectiveness as well, because our operating costs are too high from what an ideal position would be. So on an ongoing basis, we need to improve quality, quality of service rendered to the customer. We need to re reduce our uh, expenditure. And, and we have 1.5 billion savings plan between now and 2015, which is very much on the right tracks, as also as, as Duny Deverne will show you a little later on. So we're on the right track. In order to reach uh, the ambition AXA objectives, you'll see through the uh, analysis of the figures that the uh, underlying earnings uh, 
that the solidity of our balance sheet, these bear out that we are perfectly on track uh, in marching order that we devised initially, despite an economic underlying in mature countries particularly, which hasn't always proved very favorable uh, to the fact that well, that a recessive environment in a certain number of countries is in the offing, or is even here, or again, the impact of interest rates that have remained in the doldrums. Uh, and, and this is true for long-term interest as well, as well which doesn't uh, uh, favor insurance uh, companies, particularly in life insurance. I believe that 2012, beyond that transformation of the group, has also helped us to show that the teams are focusing on what is essential, which is the execution of the priorities and strategies that have been defined. You can have a good strategy, define the right priorities, but if there's some faulty execution, then you fail. It's not the case, I believe, and you will see through the financials later on that 2012, from that standpoint, proved to be satisfactory. And finally, it's an exercise that was at the beginning of the turnaround. Uh, before, As you know, the operations that suffered were those of the U.S. life insurance due to so-called variable annuities and asset management uh, business where uh, collection uh, was negative for some years on these two fronts both on the uh, result of, uh, profile and on the collection of asset management. We believe that things have cleared up, are a bit better, especially if you look at asset management. Collecting them has turned positive in the fourth quarter of last year, and this seems to be borne out. So these operations now are continuing their uh, momentum. Now, we're continuing this transformation, therefore, and if we attempt uh, to uh, put some attributes behind these efforts, we're trying to have a more collaborative group, more nimble, more solid, and more uh, responsible. Quickly now, more collaborative. Well, the, uh, the, the, culture, uh, the culture is at the forefront of our success. Being an insurer involves people, men and women, and therefore, the ability to develop within the group the adequate expertise is also the ability to make sure that teams can work together and the ability to leverage uh, scale effects due to the fact that we are uh, doing business in 57 countries without losing efficiency. All of this is essential. And as you know, because we mentioned this before, We've created global lines of business, such as the PNC, and Jean-Laurent Granier is uh, the head of it, and the life uh, line. Jacques de Vaucleroy, unfortunately, couldn't be with us. He is the head of it. And the fact of having created these lines of businesses on a global basis helps us work better. All the teams that operate in these specialties in the various territories and helps us to identify new risks, uh, prevent them better, and identify new business opportunities and take uh, make the most, really, the synergies that we uh, are able to identify now. The second topic, a more agile or nimble group in these extremely um, difficult and changing periods. This is very important, and you as shareholders uh, should be keen to see us develop this. We want to continue to develop our business, but without having to raise additional capital, since we believe that the level of uh, share prices is still too low in our industry to justify additional funds from shareholders. So we need to do this by being more nimble as far as the way we use our capital. Therefore, we need to generate a result that is rising, but also be able to move around capital to places from places which are less of a priority to those places which are more of a priority, or we need to be more productive in what we do. I believe AXA is among the uh, global players in its sector that has proven the biggest uh, nimbleness and agility in terms of managing its balance sheet since 2008. We have redeployed nearly 6 billion euros in capital uh, of, uh, f from operations we sold in mature countries towards emerging countries. Therefore, we have strengthened our presence in 20 countries where we were not or where we were 
with sizes that were not adequate enough and among them of course the big uh, very big emerging countries where we're starting to hold positions which are extremely robust if you look at what has been since 2008 the uh, the changing situation in terms of pnc and uh, the life insurance business it has evolved in significant manners the uh, revenues in the pnc business has moved from 8 to 14% uh, in the course of these 4 years it was at 4% in 2007 therefore this is a major uh, acceleration in in the life business from 6 to 17% in those countries business is profitable margins are beefy so you find there are two things which are sometimes unfortunately to uh, find in mature countries uh, double digit growth and margins often exceeding what you find in so called mature countries the example which is up now on this page is an interesting example about China. It's a difficult uh, mar market to ac access because the Chinese like to protect their turf directly or indirectly, but we believe that there now we have started to build the pillars uh, towards a solid and sustainable growth. We've put in there what was uh, the revenue in the life business in our former organization, and what you find now the half year uh, uh, in the second half of 2012 of what we've just launched with ICBC, this large Chinese bank, within a matter of one quarter, the volume what we used to, we do has been multiplied by two and a half, and we believe it's just the beginning of the expansion into that segment. Certainly, alongside this, we developed the PNC insurance, and that. That's the deal uh, we made last week, which was signed off by Denis Duvin last week, which will help us to develop our um, PNC business directly in China. And it's important to know that it has become today the biggest motor uh, business uh, in the world. They buy more cars every year than Americans. The first ones buy 17 million cars and are moving towards 20 or 25, while the second ones are between 13 and 15, the second being the Americans. And for us, the motor insurance is a core business, so it's an expansion uh, that is quite interesting. Now, the agility of the group can be gauged through its ability to to transform its technical indicators and turn our uh, uh, mix and the PNC revenue, which is on the left-hand side of this page, continued to rise by improving that result. We uh, took a comparison of the three years to make it more telling. The revenue continues to rise in reality. Uh, since 2000, the PNC revenue has nearly doubled. And the combined ratio, which is the technical indicator that gauges the efficiency of performance, gained nearly six points uh, since 2009 for uh, the adjusted elements. So the PNC uh, operations are quite profitable. Therefore, our target is much lower than the 98.8. We believe that we can reach around 96 in life savings. Uh, uh, since 2009, margin new business moved from 18% to 31%, so a good rise in margins, which in the long term will see uh, a rise in the annual uh, result and also a change uh, of the business mix with a reduction in the uh, share that comes from the general savings funds, which we call the euro funds, which are instruments which today are less attractive for uh, the customers given the low level of interest rates than compared to what they used to be in the past and which are uh, pay, uh, less interesting for shareholders. Conversely, there's a strong increase in the health-related uh, operations because uh, they gained nearly 10% in a matter of uh, two th or three years, actually. The group is also more solid. The change in our equity of our uh, debt and solvency since the core of the crisis shows that we have reinforced dramatically our situation. Equity gained about 15 billion euros. Debts are down by 10 points. 
in the period of crisis, it was a matter of concern for analysts, even if it is one factor which during lush periods helped us to expand faster than others, and solvency itself has sharply risen, which positions us in a fairly comfortable position nowadays. Now, when it comes to uh, uh, social responsibility, the group, and you see that on this uh, page, we are better rated than the average of our competitors, and we are continuing our efforts in this direction, in particular by trying to develop uh, our actions related to uh, educating people on risks, educating people on uh, longevity on educating people in the area of health. We believe that being an insurer doesn't stop uh, to making a commercial business our responsibility towards our environment in terms of the human and political and social elements is also to share and make sure the knowledge we have is shared about the risks, their uh, changes, the way to prevent them, and how we can repair their consequences. And on this, I think a number of initiatives, in particular the uh, research fund uh, by AXA are initiatives that have been uh, greeted positively and position us quite well. All in all, we believe, and you will now see it further in with the specifics of the statistics with Denis Duverne, we believe that in a world which remains extremely fragile and uncertain, we are well positioned because AXA is a global brand, because the organization is quite responsive, because our teams are highly committed, and because the needs uh, of our customers are growing. This world is uncertain, difficult, but everywhere there's a need for protection, and therefore there's a need for insurance, and all of this is on the rise. So it behooves us to seize these opportunities. We hope, of course, that the changes, the better changes of our share prices, but still not adequate enough that we've seen in the past year will continue, while the markets will become aware of what that transformation is doing and what it uh, has in itself in terms of future hopes. This is what I wanted to share with you before turning it over to Céline Soubran, who will now come on stage, and before the, uh, Denis Duvin and his financials, she will talk to us about what we are undertaking in France in terms of prevention. Céline, after the jingle, it will be over to AXA Prevention and to you. Thank you. Prévention pour nous chez AXA France, c'est un axe essentiel de notre responsabilité d'entreprise. Et tous les jours, nous nous disons que si à travers ces actions, nous pouvons éviter des catastrophes, alors oui, oui, nous sommes fiers de faire notre métier.
Good afternoon. So what is prevention for? Why is AXA investing so much in this field? These questions, you might have raised them in the course of former shareholders' meetings. So as Nicolas Moreau reminded us, the chairman of the AXA France in this uh, video, uh, uh, prevention is at the heart of our uh, business. Prevention and, re integrated, and risk is integrated into our offers, into our, our underwritings, that beyond that commercial business, we wanted to turn it into an engagement for France, in, uh, for AXA. In society, make sure that the risk expertise that we have, that we put it for the benefit of society at large. And this is the spirit behind the Association AXA Prevention, which has been acting for 30 years against risk. Under the impulse of Eric Lemire, we undertake on a daily basis awareness uh, uh, actions on the ground with two main goals, bring down the number of accidents and also the number of claims for insurers. There's still a lot that needs to be done in France in this area because there's 11 million accidents every year which uh, cause over 25,000 fatalities. We also want to constantly strengthen through that uh, prevention and protection, the closeness with uh, every audience, every public, in particular our customers, our leads. We know that the customer or a potential uh, uh, lead who knows our prevention actions uh, has more in intentions, a strong intention of uh, buying. And so AXA is therefore serving the preference for the AXA brand and also uh, therefore has an impact on our business. Uh, we've created to be very close to uh, French expectations, a risk watchdog, and we've asked in our 2013 uh, of the survey on uh, the way people drive, we've asked French people to, uh, to rank uh, their priorities in terms of prevention. The first one are uh, accidents in daily life at 40 percent, then uh, road prevention, um, uh, which is uh, hitting 38 percent. And there's a new danger, which is increasingly identified, which are risks linked to social uh, networks, which are at 37 percent, according to the French, and equivalent to health. So you can see that the perceptions and expectations of French people are changing. This is why we are constantly adjusting uh, the action plan of acts of prevention now if we focus first on what is considered as being a priority, which are accidents in daily life, we see that they are right, because these accidents represent 20,000 deaths in France, five times more than people on the road, which is what is complicated with them is that it involves the intimate uh, space of the French at home, and this is why we are banking on our uh, tied agents, on our networks, to convey that prevention-related message, we have some educational tools for kids because it's the kids who are hardest hit through these accidents which take place uh, at home or close to home. Children are hit uh, through, the, through drownings or uh, uh, suff suffocating the victim of uh, fire, all of this. Uh, this collection of educational books have been put in place and help us act. We, likewise, we've provided uh, our networks with 4 million uh, kits, which help to secure uh, the rooms in a household. So uh, we protect there for 80,000 households through the action of our society or association. The second priority for the French is uh, uh, road prevention. There has been some uh, progress in this field, even though it's a major cause of accidents. It makes the headlines every year. Progress is uh, noteworthy, and in, let's remember that in the 70s there were over 16,000 deaths on the roads, and since 2010 we are under the 4,000 um, fatalities on the road each year. So it's a considerable uh, progress. We've divided by four the number of fatalities in a matter of 40 years. So the the purpose, the target of public authorities is to be under the bar of 2,000 in 2020 to catch up with our European neighbors who are at level who succeeded uh, in meeting that challenge, in particular the UK and Germany who succeeded in reducing uh, very sharply the number of 
I mean, the death toll on the roads. And so uh, within AXA prevention, we're following this line. We mainly work on the speed in towns and cities, especially by putting together educational radars. I mean, at least one out of two French uh, drive too fast in uh, uh, urban areas, and we are continuing to put in place these so-called educational radars. We work also towards so-called vulnerable uh, uh, people, like uh, people with mopeds, uh, with bikes and motorbikes. We've organized for them an awareness uh, action uh, in terms of the uh, the gear they wear. It's called uh, Save Your Fingers. It was greeted by uh, the press and by the public authorities who were able in Marseille and Paris convey a message on their protection via the carrying of their gear, their equipment now. Now, the third field, which is a priority for the French, is the health-related prevention. Henri de Castre mentioned it before. The good news is that people live longer and longer, but the challenge is to live longer while remaining in, sound, in good health by making sure you keep alive your health capital. We have three actions in this area, physical exercising, nutrition, and also brain, uh, being fit with your brain. Acting on them, you can remain fit. And therefore, in order to carry this message on the ground, we've organized across France. It was started, by the way, in 2012, and it's continuing in 2013. Uh, some uh, symposiums with a major uh, geographic professor, professor and also some awareness actions thanks to some uh, videos on uh, YouTube. They were viewed by over 2 million uh, web goers with uh, specific humor, and it's Georges Riel on the right-hand side who was uh, really uh, Hitting uh, the, uh, the people who didn't have the, a very healthy uh, way of life. And also on iPhone and iPad, there's the uh, fitness test where you can gauge uh, your fitness and uh, oversee how it changes over time. The fourth and last field, which is priority for the French and which is becoming increasingly, uh, well, holding pride of place in their daily life as uh, uh, social. Uh, media uh, encroaches into everyday life. Uh, internet uh, problems. Uh, we have five million people over Twitter, for example, and, and uh, a huge number of people on Facebook. And this brings with it a huge number of new perils. For example, stealing people's identity without realizing uh, this. We're sharing increasing amount of data over social media. Uh, and this can involve uh, very important pieces of information, your address, your birth date, for example. And this can uh, prompt uh, cyber uh, criminal acts, uh, including uh, usurping your identity. And uh, uh, this is a danger which eclipses um, house breakings, for example, or theft. And uh, people who do break into homes uh, look at the photos that you're posting on social media and they can appraise the value of the goods in your home. They can see whether you're, uh, you're at home or, or on holiday. And this is where uh, the problem may be sparked off. And then the third area of risk, reputational risk or cyber harassment, as it's termed. And we know that this mainly affects young people and the youngest among us are children. It's 20%. 20% of children between 8 and 17 have already been insulted over the internet, and I think we need to protect them against that. So with that in mind, we set up within AXA prevention the following approach, uh, digital good sense. And we were the first uh, entity to uh, formalize uh, a position in, in this realm. We've uh, produced with a Bayard a, a document which has become a gold standard in the field in which you can have a you can have a copy upon leaving the auditorium and this content is shared over Facebook uh, with the 25,000 fans that make up our community and uh, web browsers could also have a kind of uh, a highway code for the internet which enables people to benefit from the web and uh, social media in, in, while enjoying a huge amount of security we're going to continue in this vein 
and uh, in September in schools uh, with uh, uh, primary school children, infant school uh, children. We're going to be working on making sure uh, that these kids can be aware and keep their antennae out because they need to look after themselves and they need to uh, be thinking about this. I mean, uh, doing preventive work with young people, this is readying ourselves and protecting our future. This can be visionary, but also it could be simply just not making sure people doesn't people don't fall over or maybe somebody uh, prevents uh, is prevented from having a long-lasting uh, disability. And, of course, it's also, and this is most important, of course, saving people's lives. And this is the usefulness and, of course, the nobility of the initiative that we've undertaken. Thank you very much for your attention. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm now going to talk about the financial performance of AXA in 2012, drilling down to the detail, more so than what um, Mr. De Cass did a little earlier on. So our uh, premium income in 2012 increased by 5% to reach a little more than 90 billion euros. This is a 2% increase on a like for like uh, uh, scope and with uh, uh, premium income sustaining itself in mature markets and an increased pace of uh, growth of that figure in uh, emerging markets. Now, at the bottom of this uh, picture, you can see the breakdown of premium income, 23% realized in France, a little more than 30% in Northern Europe and Central and Eastern Europe, 14% in the region that we dub Mediterranean and Latin America. 13% in the US, 11% uh, in Asia. Now, I'd just like to look at the various uh, segments that make up our business. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, LNS. Uh, 3.9 billion in, worth, euros worth of inflows in 2012, 11 billion euros worth of uh, service rendered to uh, our customers in protection and health, 6.2 billion euros of new business in about 30 countries. Now, these new businesses have been done in uh, protection and health, 7% uh, in new business uh, increase, 40% total increase. Uh, in uh, unit accounts, 32% there, which weighs, is part of the total pie, 32%, and 2% increase from one fiscal year to the next. And the uh, general account savings fund is down. This is the euro-denominated fund in an environment of low interest rates. Of course, we're selling less uh, euro-denominated uh, securities they're less interesting for the customer for the customers and uh, less valuable for us because they consume capital and then um, selling uh, mutual funds 13 percent increase 11 percent of the total cake so three percent overall with uh, increase in new business and because of our product mix we're seeing an increase in our margin to the tune of six points now let's look at PNC. In PNC, we are fourth, ranked fourth in the world. We uh, made payments of 19 billion euros to our customers, to what, to more than 10 million customers. We're the leading PNC player in Asia, which has been uh, reinforced by the initiatives in 2012 in conjunction with HSBC in the beginning of this year with Tian Ping. Uh, we we uh, uh, provided, uh, well, we, we processed 6.5 million claims. Uh, we have a stance in 40 countries, and we have the th ranked third uh, by way of direct uh, insurance provision in Europe. 31.3 billion is the premium income <coughs> balance between uh, pr um, re service rendered to private individuals, 54%, and uh, then corporate policies are weighing in for 46% of premium income. This premium income is uh, increased by 3% over 2012, and our profitability has improved with a reduction in our uh, in our uh, combined ratio of 0.8. So uh, premium income and profitability on the up. 
Let's look at the third segment of our business, uh, asset management. Now, uh, our turnover here has increased uh, by 2% to reach 3.3 billion. Uh, assets under management up by 7% to reach 903 uh, billion. And as uh, Henri de Cass mentioned earlier on, we're reaching a total uh, positive net inflow of plus 3 billion for investors managers and plus 4 with Alliance Bernstein after three consecutive uh, doldrum years after the crisis that set in in 2008. So recovery in uh, turnover, an increase in the number of assets under management, and uh, we're returning now to positive net inflows. Now, let's turn to productivity. And in this arena, we've uh, pursued our efforts in the past. Henry de Cast mentioned our commitment to improve profitability to the tune of 1.5 billion between 2010 and 2015. We've uh, taken up the gauntlet here uh, right at the beginning of the year with 1.7 billion. So it's been up from 1.5 to 1.7. And we've seen uh, 700 million euros worth of improved productivity. 300 in 2011, 400 in 2012. Now, these productivity gains, 700 million total, have meant that we uh, has been yielded by uh, the fact that we've continued to invest in 2013 more than 1.2 uh, billion euros worth of investment in order to continue to modernize our operations, our marketing and distribution uh, activities, but also our support functions so that we can better serve our customers and always be effective and productive to their benefit. Now, improvement of business and uh, improvement in profitability uh, translates to a good increase in underlying earnings, which has been has been up to 13% to reach uh, 4.2 billion uh, and 9% on a like-for-like -like basis. Now, this uh, underlying earnings result is 42% from PNC, 32% from uh, protection health and 26% from uh, savings and asset management. Now let's look at uh, the operational income plus the uh, realized capital gains or losses up 31% to reach 4.5 billion. Uh, uh, so 31% on a published basis, 28% on a like-for-like uh, -like basis. This comes from the good performance of underlying earnings, but also the fact that we were able to realize less provisions for asset impairments in uh, 2012 as compared to 2011. Uh, net income, uh, 4.1 billion, pretty much stable from one year to the next. If you rule out the, uh, the gains from disposals, non-recurring disposals that were realized in 2011, this means the net income is up 44%. Once again, there were less uh, non-recurring items in 2012 as opposed to 2011. So if we look at the, uh, the net income figure as published, it remains flat and it's only shrunk by 1%. So now, Henri de Cast has already given you the salient features of the uh, soundness of our balance sheet. He compared the changing face of a certain number of indicators since the beginning of the crisis. Now, if we look at uh, things compared with 2011, equity from, uh, has been up to 53.7 billion. Our solvability ratio for its part, according to solvability one, is still in force today, has gone from 188 to 233 percent. If you look at economic solvability, and this is solvability two, of course, gone up to 206 percent from 183 million, about twice the minimum necessary, and our gearing ratio has continued to fall, going from 27 to 26 percent of equity. Now, we've been able to sustain a good diversification and a quality of, of security in our investment portfolio. Uh, in 2012, this equated to 491 billion euros. These investments are primarily undertaken in Gavis, 45%, and then corporate bonds, 31%. And you can see that shares only weigh, only weigh in for 3%, uh, 5% real estate, alternative investment, 3%, other bonds, 7%. And uh, uh, we also have uh, what loans made to it. Uh, policy holders 1%. So mm, you can see 
uh, our portfolio of investments has been in fine fettle and uh, kept its ground in 2011. Now, let's look at how the dividend is, uh, is progressing. So dividend, the dividends that is going to be offered to you and that you need to vote upon today will go up to uh, will go up from 0.69 to 0.72 centimes uh, by euros rather up 4% now this dividend can increase in this way from 69 centimes to 72 centimes because uh, free cash flow has been upped in the group Operational cash flow, rather, available has, uh, is up to stand at 4.7 billion. And also the fact that our balance sheet is sound. The solvability indicators that I've just uh, covered just a moment ago um, are measured after factoring in the payout of the dividend. So uh, based on the 31st of December, 5.4% um, is the yield. And uh, we're distributing 40% of the current net income. So uh, we've got uh, the shareholding makeup here. Mutuals access 14.3%. Uh, share the employee shareholding 12.6%. Individual shareholding 6.6% rather. And so the shares are mainly held by shareholders located outside of France. Uh, now, if we look at uh, the performance of the share, the share price has uh, increased 42% over the period, 6% since the 1st of January. This uh, performance can be compared very well with uh, the European insurance uh, sector, which was up 26% over a year and 9% since the beginning of the year. Over a 10-year period, the share price has been up 66%, less good than in the insurance uh, realm as a whole, and a little less uh, favorable when compared to the stock market average. But uh, over a year, we are seeing, we have seen rather significant growth. So to conclude on 2012, what we can say? Well, 2012 proved to be a good year in terms of growth and in terms of performance in terms of the solidity of our balance sheet. I won't go over the figures. I've mentioned those earlier on. But we're on the right track for executing or fulfilling our ambition AXA plan with the three priorities, uh, increased selectivity uh, with mature countries, acceleration in high-growth countries, and greater effectiveness across the board. We were able to remedy problems that uh, stem from the crisis in terms of asset management, where we are seeing positive inflows now. And in the United States, where the contribution of our American activities to the underlying earnings weighed in to for 20% of, of the group uh, total monies for uh, LNS. So pretty satisfactory, the results for 2012. I'd just like to round off by thanking you, the shareholders, for your loyalty over this period. And I'd like to hand over the floor once again to Mr. Henry de Castro. Thank you very much for your attention. We are attached to building a relationship of proximity and confidence with our actionaires, and multiplying all along the year the occasions of meetings and information.
Alors, je vous indique que le the report by the uh, chairman of the board, which was drafted in accordance with provisions Article L22537 of uh, the business code, which deals with the makeup of the board and the uh, principle of uh, balance uh, representation of uh, men and women on the condition, the preparatory conditions of the board uh, proceedings and also the internal control procedures and risk management are on page 330 and uh, following of the 2012 annual report. The base document, I'll turn it over now to Norbert D'Entresangle on governance and compensation. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors, it's an honor to report to you about uh, the way AXA governance operated in 2012 and also the compensation remuneration policy of its uh, top managers. On the screen, a summary of the current governance put in place in 2010. That governance hinges, uh, revolves around the board who takes the most significant decisions and appoints uh, general management, Henri de Castre, uh, chairman, CEO, and Denis Duverne, also uh, deputy CEO, the four council committees also, which appear on, at the bottom of the screen, also prepare the decisions of the board to recommendations as a vice chairman and independent uh, di director. My mission is to have a constant dialogue with members of the board, especially the independent directors and also with general management. I in make sure that the independent directors can really play their important role and that communication with general management is as fluid and transparent as possible. In practice, I participate in the preparation of each board meeting together with general management. We review together the uh, meetings, the timetable, their agendas, or the documents which are directed to the members of the board. I also meet um, frequently the main top managers of the group during individual uh, meetings. Regarding the proceedings of the board 2012, so again sustained uh, business. The board met nine times in 2012 with the average attendance uh, uh, of directors, the attendance uh, ratio at 84 percent of four uh, committees of the board held 21 meetings in 2012 with the, an average attendance uh, rate of 88 percent. I would like to thank all my fellow directors for their active uh, contribution to the works of the board in 2012. Among the chief topics that the board uh, handled uh, in the past year, there was the uh, group strategy review, uh, looking into the 2011 accounts as well as the half-year 2012 accounts, uh, reviewing the significant divestitures and acquisitions, also reviewing the business portfolio allocation of capital and day-to-day -day business, and finally, the makeup of the board and its committees. As in every year, the board also uh, assessed its Operation Jean Martin Falls, Chairman of the Governance and Ethics Committee, uh, during individual meetings or in the form of uh, written answers, has collected, uh, in the form of a questionnaire, the uh, assessments and proposals of each director. The main points of improvement that were identified were discussed during the uh, board uh, meeting on February 20th, 2013, and deal mainly with the definition of the missions and responsibilities of co the committees, the reports of the committees as uh, presented to the board, as well as the information uh, given to uh, the directors in between board meetings. Following these 
conclusions, the board decided to unite the uh, Ethics Committee with the Compensation Committee. This new committee will now be called Governance and Remuneration Committee and will carry out all the missions which previously were at the responsibility of the Remuneration Committee and the Ethics Committee. Uh, uh, before you vote uh, later on, let, uh, let me point out that uh, the term of office of Mr. Anthony Amitol and Michel Pebro, members of the board respectively since 1996 and 1997, are uh, coming to exp expiration on behalf of the AXA board. I would like to thank very uh, uh, warmly Anthony Hamilton and Michel Pebro. They have played a key role within the supervisory board and uh, on the uh, board of directors in the past 15 years. To succeed them, the board suggests to appoint two new independent directors, Mrs. Diana Oppenheimer and Mr. Paul Ermüller. Mrs. Diana Oppenheimer, who is in this room, has spent over 25 years in the banking sector in the USA and then in Europe. Until 2011, she was the ex um, deputy CEO for the retail bank uh, Barclays. She has an in-depth knowledge of the financial sector, especially as regards marketing and distribution. I suggest that we view now a video uh, regarding Mrs. Diana Oppenheimer. Hello, I'm Diana Oppenheimer. I'm the, I'm the founder and CEO, and CEO of Cameo Works, Cameo Works, which is an which advisory, is an advisory firm, firm that works with companies on the west coast of America, primarily in the areas of technology and retail. I also sit on the boards of Tesco, Tesco Bank, and NCR Corporation. I'm very pleased to be joining the board of AXA because I bring with me a background in financial services as the former vice chair of Barclays Bank, with responsibility in the UK and continental Europe for retail banking. <clears throat> Before that, I worked in the Americas in retail banking for about the last couple of decades. I'm particularly interested in insurance because I think the market is changing due to regulatory and new ways to reach customers. My background in digital channels over a global network, I hope will be able to contribute significantly for the AXA board. Thank you very much for your consideration. Mr. Paul Ermela, also who is attending this meeting, has been heading since 2002 the uh, Capgemini Group. His expertise in the area of information systems should uh, be uh, very helpful for uh, the board while uh, the digital development has been defined as a strategic priority for AXA. Let's now view uh, the video on Paul Hermelin. Bonjour, bonjour, je m'appelle Paul Hermelin. Je fais toujours vivre mes 60 ans en printemps. Et je suis, et je suis président et directeur général de Capgemini. J'en suis le directeur général depuis 2002 et président depuis l'année dernière. Je suis très content, très excité à l'idée de rejoindre le conseil d'administration d'AXA où j'espère pouvoir apporter certaines connaissances, non pas des métiers financiers, mais connaissances du monde. Capgemini est très actif aux États-Unis, par exemple, qui est notre premier pays, en fait, aujourd'hui, et où je me rends tous les mois depuis près de 12 ans. Et puis je connais bien d'autres pays, le Brésil, où nous sommes forts, certains pays comme l'Inde. Mais je crois que le plus important, c'est la technologie, les, les méthodes de distribution des produits, toute la révolution digitale sont probablement des choses qui vont déterminer pour une partie l'avenir d'AXA et où j'apporterai des compétences que je crois assez solides. During the voting procedure, you will be asked to ratify the cooptation of Mr. Jean-Pierre Clamadieu as a director. Mr. Jean-Pierre Clamadieu, who is also among us today, has been since May 2012 the chairman of the management committee of the Solvay Group. Previously, he was the chairman and CEO of Rodia. His quality, his management qualities, and his great experience in the industry sector will certainly enrich uh, our board. The video uh, will now be uh, up on the screen. 
Bonjour, je m'appelle Jean-Pierre Clamadieu, j'ai 54 ans. Euh, je suis depuis un an président du comité exécutif de Solvay, qui est un des grands groupes de chimie mondiaux. Et avant cela, j'ai été pendant 7 ans le patron de Rodia, un autre groupe de chimie d'origine française qui a fusionné avec Solvay à l'automne 2011. Je suis très heureux de l'opportunité qui m'est donnée aujourd'hui de rejoindre le conseil d'AXA. Euh, J'espère pouvoir apporter à ce conseil l'expérience du patron d'un grand groupe industriel dans un métier, la chimie, dans lequel la gestion des risques est évidemment un élément très important. Grand groupe qui a une présence mondiale très forte, en particulier dans les pays émergents, où nous réalisons près de 40% de notre chiffre d'affaires, ce qui m'amène régulièrement à être confronté à des sujets ou à des dossiers qui ont trait à la Chine, au Brésil, à la Russie ou aux états unis Et je sais bien sûr que ce sont des pays qui sont très importants pour le développement d'AXA. Et puis j'y apporterai aussi l'expérience d'un patron qui est en plein processus de transformation de son groupe. Et je crois que là aussi, c'est quelque chose qui peut peut être utile au conseil d'AXA. Et puis pour moi, c'est bien sûr l'opportunité de découvrir un nouveau monde, celui de l'assurance, et de découvrir un groupe qui me paraît avoir particulièrement bien réussi sa propre transformation ces dernières années. Finally, you're being asked to renew Mrs. Dominique Reniche and Mr. Ramon de Oliveira as administrators. They're well known to you since they've been Uh, sitting on the board since 2005 for Dominique Renich and since 2009 for uh, Ramon de Oliveira. Following this uh, presentation about how AXA operates and is involved in the area of governance, I would like to report about the remuneration policy of its uh, top management. The various components of the remuneration of AXA's management teams are summarized up on the screen. The uh, cash remuneration in the short term is made up of the fixed uh, salary and the annual variable uh, remuneration are added than deferred remuneration made up of options and performance shares. Their aim is to allow a convergence between the shareholders' interest and the interest of uh, the managers over the medium and long term. The compensation committee that I chair has, among other missions, to uh, express proposals to the board regarding the remuneration of the executive uh, directors. While preparing these proposals, the committee uh, has made a, an overall assessment of the remuneration factors. The committee reviews, of course, the uh, remuneration uh, practices, uh, uh, comparing with uh, European and global uh, similar companies with the aim of uh, suggesting competitive remunerations, encouraging superior performance, and aligning the levels of remunerations with the results of the company. The remuneration committee reviews uh, frequently the uh, general principles of the group's remuneration policy. In this regard, the committee is particularly watchful about internal fairness and taking into account collective and individual performance. When it comes now to the cash remunerations of the members of the management committee, it is made up therefore of a fixed part and of a variable part. The variable part uh, dominates in the overall remuneration in order to ensure that they uh, try to reach superior performance. The amount of the variable remuneration which is actually paid out depends on achieving performance goals. Such performance goals are set at the beginning of the year and aim at allowing that an actual uh, variation take place based on the results obtained. By way of illustration, the variable remuneration of the chairman and CEO has uh, been ranging between 68% and 97% of the target amount in the course of the five last years. Up on the screen, you see the respective weighting of the various components when measuring the performance which uh, drives the various remuneration for Mr. Henri de Casse, the chairman and CEO, the group performance accounts for 60% and individual performance accounts for 40%. For the other members of the management committee, 
uh, the performance of the operational entities also taken into account as well as the services or departments they are responsible for. The remuneration of the members of the management committee is now up on the screen as for 2012. As regards the chairman and CEO and the deputy uh, CEO, the total remuneration, the target, the total remuneration which was uh, set as a target for Henri de Casse has remained unchanged since 2008 at 3.3 million euro. His actual remuneration in 2012 was 3 million 285 thousand euros. The overall uh, target remuneration for Denis Duverne has also remained unchanged in 2012 at 2.2 .2 million euros. His actual remuneration in 2012 amounted to 2 million 220 thousand euros. The board of directors in addition, uh, decided to introduce for the chairman and CEO and deputy CEO a deferred payment mechanism of a part equal to 30% of their variable remuneration for 2012. In accordance to that mechanism, the deferred amount will be paid in two tranches, one in 2014 and the other in 2015. The actual amount paid out may vary depending on the share price of AXA during the deferred period with a limit of uh, a ceiling equal to 120% of the deferred amount. The introduction of a deferred part within the variable remuneration, although not, requ uh, not required to, uh, to this day, is aimed at reinforcing the alignment of AXA with the practices and regulations in force in the sector of financial services in France and uh, internationally and have even more uh, uh, variations uh, in terms of the overall remuneration and reflect the multi-annual nature of decisions taken by the executive uh, directors. AXA is also carrying out a, a policy uh, based on performance actions and options in France and abroad. These allocations are done, are made each year generally at the end of March. All the options allocated to the members of the management committee, among them, of course, Henri de Castagny Duvert, are subject to performance conditions. The number of options that can be exercised is determined or is set uh, relative to uh, the AXA uh, share performance and relative to the Eurostox insurance index. In the case of performance shares, every beneficiary, regardless of his or her position in the line of command, are subjected to the con performance conditions for 100% of allocated shares. These performance criteria measure over a period of two years both the performance of the group at the rate of one third and the performance of the entity of the beneficiary, which amounts or accounts for two thirds of the total amount. In March 2013, the board of directors uh, paid out a new allocation of options and shares performance shares for many beneficiaries. The share of the two executive directors is below the limit of 10 percent, which was set by the board in 2010, uh, uh, according to the AFEP-MEDEF recommendations. The remuneration elements of the AXA top managers that we have just reviewed are described in full details in the AXA base document available uh, on the website or as you leave this room, I invite you to consult it if you wish to obtain more uh, details. Up on the screen, you see now uh, the history of the allocation of options and performance shares between 2007 and 2013. Early 2013, the decision was taken to limit the allocation of options to only the, uh, the group's uh, top uh, executives, which, ex which accounts for a decrease of the number of beneficiaries at 162. However, for the other uh, members of the group, the share of uh, performance shares has been reinforced. You will also see that the overall number of bene equity beneficiaries options and performance uh, shares in the last column has been sharply up since 2007 and continued to rise in 2013. 
Therefore, over 7,300 staff members of the group were able to benefit from performance share uh, in 2013. Lastly, a few words regarding the group's policy in terms of profit sharing for all um, staff members. In terms of the AXA results, on March 16, 2013, the Board of Directors assigned 50 uh, free shares to each AXA staff member as part of a new uh, operation called AXA Mile, similar to the one we saw in 2007. That allocation aimed at thanking uh, every AXA employee for the job accomplished in 2011 and involve them in the deployment of the strategic plan called a Ambition AXA. The first tranche of 25 AXA miles was allocated without any uh, conditions. The second uh, slice or tranche was subject to at least reaching one of the two indicators linked to the Ambition Plan AXA, which is the increase of the um, underlying uh, earnings per share or the an increase of the um, group customer satisfaction index. At the end of December 2012, these two goals were achieved and therefore the allocation of the second tranche was confirmed. At the end of a, a two or four year acquisition period, that is in 2014, 2016, depending on the countries, the AXA miles allocated in 2012 will give rise to 50 AXA shares. Your, uh, AXA. And I'll say for a, a while now, AXA has been running um, a, a policy designed to give more employees shares. Uh, with each passing year, the group offers to its employees in France and internationally uh, the opportunity to sign up to uh, an operation call uh, of um, employee shareholdership entitled Share Plan in the form of a capital increase, which is uh, made available to them exclusively. So in 2012, more than 21,000 employees in uh, 40 countries participated in this capital increase operation for a total subscription amount of more than 290 million euros. And on 31st of December 2012, uh, Tide agents and uh, employees of the group held 7.43% of, of equity, total equity. Lastly, in France, around 94 million euros were dispersed in 2012. Uh, and the banner of profit sharing uh, for a total of 25,200 employees for a, an average amount of more than 3,700 euros per employee. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Je vais maintenant demander. Now, I'll ask Michel Laforce from Pricewaterhouse Coopers and his colleague to come to the rostrum and present their report. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is our honour to uh, execute uh, our assignment as statutory auditors for fiscal year 2012. For this fiscal year, we issued nine reports that we'd like to submit to you in a synoptic fashion. These reports covers the following areas. The control of annual and consolidated uh, company statements, uh, as well as spe additional specific checks provided for by the law, uh, the apparatus of internal controls pertaining to accounting and financial information, regulated uh, agreements, and uh, operations pertaining to uh, equity and the issuance of securities. For my part, I will be uh, talking about uh, the consolidated uh, accounts and annual accounts, but also be talking about internal controls. And my colleague will be presenting you the other two reports. So, first of all, let's look at the report on the annual accounts and the consolidated accounts. Uh, remind you that the underlying objective of our assignment was to make sure that the accounts are submitted to you are uh, sincere, uh, accurate, and give you a proper understanding of the accounts, and they don't have any anomaly, any significant anomaly. So we drew upon audits, audit work, and run by our firm in all area, major areas in the scope of AXA. Now, let's look at the annual uh, accounts of AXA. 
we have asserted the, uh, the, uh, the accuracy of the accounts. We have no observations to make following the two specific checks uh, provided for by the law, particularly those pertaining to additional information communicated to shareholders. And you can see that information in the annual report. Now, with regard to our report on the consolidated accounts of AXA Group, we also certify without any reserve that, uh, that the accounts are accurate. <laughs> Uh, there has been a changing accounting practice, but this practice has drawn no further comment on our part. Now, with regard to uh, that, no comment to make. We also uh, are saying that there is an uncertain economic underlying, which means that at accounts closure, uh, it's difficult to understand whether the interest rates in the report will prove uh, those that actually occur. Now, in our report, uh, we look at the value of the financial assets, uh, technical provisions booked, uh, the uh, value of portfolio, and the uh, deferred uh, profits, uh, the uh, good goodwill that are subject to uh, recovery tests, uh, the assets and liability of, of deferred tax and uh, dealing of derivatives and uh, hedging activities. But no comment. Uh, we have made no comment about, about that, and we believe they're perfectly sincere and accurate. Now, with internal uh, controls, now, for this report, we were looking at the uh, chairman of the board of directors report pertaining on internal controls uh, linked to procedures for drawing up uh, accounting and financial information. We had to look at the sincerity of the information presented, taking on board the objectives uh, and the overall organiza organization of the information and procedures uh, for uh, conducting internal controls. And we uh, believe that this report uh, has all the information that it is required to have uh, pursuant to the Code of Trade. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'd like to present our special report on regulated agreements. Let me remind you that the objecti objective of this was to bring to the attention of the assembly, the, uh, the commitments and agreements that are that regulated that we are mindful of, and that our work wasn't designed to uh, talk about their usefulness or, or whether they were gro well grounded or not. Uh, uh, the new agreements authorized during the procedure, uh, during the exercise, uh, fiscal year rather, contracts, disposal contracts between associate, the AXA company rather and its 100% subsidiary AXA Asia bearing upon direct or indirect uh, holdings held by AXA company and uh, life insurance companies and non-life insurance companies of the group in Asia, uh, the uh, national uh, mutual International PTY Limited Company, AXA Indian Holdings and Philippines AXA Life Insurance uh, Corporation. Now, with regard to the second uh, convent, convention and, and uh, commitments already approved by this uh, meeting during previous fiscal years, uh, there's a protocol for of agreement between uh, BNP Paribas and AXA with regard to reciprocal uh, um, purchase uh, options. And there's also a, a commitment with regard to the senior corporate officers, Mr. Henry de Castro and Denise Duvern, with regard to uh, the benefit of an uh, additional uh, top-up pension scheme. And also there's a commitment, a commitment with regard to these same persons with regard to the benefit of social protection regimen and uh, the allocation of an indemnity with if ever people cease to uh, well, leave their position uh, within the company. Now, let me look at uh, uh, operations pertaining to equity and uh, the issuance of securities. Now, our first report is that pertaining uh, upon those operations uh, featuring in resolutions 13 to 19, the issuance of equity or various securities with uh, or without uh, the right preferential right for subscription, delegation to the board, 
uh, with possible subdelegation for a period of 26 months, uh, leave given to set um, issuance price within an annual legal uh, confine, uh, a cap, a nominal cap on capital incre on in increases, 2 billion euros for I increases with uh, preferential rights uh, of a subscription, 545 million euros for uh, a capital increase without DPS and 6 billion with uh, debt securities likely to be issued. And then there's a report on operations uh, pertaining to resolution 21 and 22, uh, shares uh, issuances and uh, securities issuances uh, giving, uh, giving claim, producing claims to holding ordinary shares uh, with a suppression of DPS, which is the preferential right to subscription. Uh, our conclusion for all these reports is the same. We have to look at the conditions of capital increases uh, and future any ca any future capital increase. We have no comment to make. Uh, the price of the issuance isn't set yet, and obviously this has to be done in the confines of what has been previously stated. Now, compliant with uh, Article. Uh, with the relevant article, uh, 225116 of the Code of, Con of Trade, we, are we, we will be drawing up the additional reports upon the realization of capital increases done by the Board of Directors. Now, we also have another report uh, pertaining upon equity and the issuance of secur securities. Uh, securities giving claim to uh, a debt security, and this is Resolution 20. These issuances are uh, giving right to claims over debt securities, not giving ri rise to a, a capital increase. We have no ob uh, observations to make. Uh, the issuance price hasn't been set, so we have no comment to make upon that. Pursuant to Article R. Double two five one one six of the Trade Code, we'll be drawing up an additional report where this, these operations be conducted by your Board of Directors. And then the fifth and last report bears upon reduction of uh, shareholders' equity by cancelling ordinary shares. So this is subject to Resolution 23. The major features of this, cancellation with a limit of 10% of, of equity over a period of, uh, in, by periods of 24 months of uh, shares purchased uh, following uh, a, a, a authorize, authorize, authorization given by the company to purchase uh, its own shares. Conclusions, we have no observation to make on the causes or conditions of the equity reduction envisaged. Uh, so we issued an additional report dated 25th of October 2012, which bears upon uh, capital increases with uh, lo loss of DPS. This features in the page 48 of the convening brochure. I finished, therefore, with these comments on these reports, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. What I suggest is that we move to a Q&A with the auditorium. We did clarify that we received one or two written questions before our meeting, and, uh, and consonant with the law, uh, We've exercised our right to have our, our, the answers to those written questions featuring on our website, and uh, which means that we don't have to read out the questions and answers, which gives us more time for uh, a dialogue with you in the auditorium. So if you have any questions to put to us, then please raise your hand uh, so that the hostesses can spot you, and they're in the auditorium, and they, of course, are equipped with mics. There's a question on my left, a gentleman there. If a hostess wouldn't mind going to the gentleman who's just stood up and who is intimating to have a mic. Hello, uh, Mr. Chairman. Hello to one and all. I am a faithful shareholder of AXA. I think my share price, however, is tumbling, but I'm staying. I'm still staying. It's, people will call me a masochist, but I'm staying. But I, I wanted to come is because since you've been using internet, uh, things are getting out of hand, of hand, and I don't like it. Beforehand, things were sent by post, and people like me. Well, we could then we were invited to come to this to this meeting. This wasn't done today, and maybe you can bear that out, Mr. Chairman. So we have to go over internet now. It's true, I do have internet, but I don't look at internet uh, day in day out. So, uh, to my mind. 
perhaps you could make a, a little effort like other companies do by sending an invitation over the internet, but also by physical post. That's my first point. Second point, and here I'll be a little bit more severe. Uh, I mean, to enter into the auditorium, uh, the welcome is so pit pitiful. I just wonder whether I'll be coming next year. I oh, know, I don't know. Anyway, thanks very much for your attention, and I uh, hope my humor will at least convince you uh, to make a positive answer. Well, I hope you will be with us next year. I do hope so. Now, we have made significant efforts to make sure that the, well, even though, of course, we don't, norm we don't normally hold our meeting here, but we have made efforts to make sure that you are welcomed in a pleasant uh, and an, an easy fashion. I do apologize if, in your case, this hasn't uh, been the case. You're the first who do have made this particular comment. Maybe other people uh, have this uh, in the back of their mind, but we'll take on board what you say. But I would like to respond to what you said to the at the beginning of your comment. Just draw to your attention that even though we're not satisfied with the level of the share price is currently, but right across the sector, it's dipped in, in 2010, but it's been, it's been upped recently by 20%. So I think things are, are turning around little by little. Now, with regard to uh, the formalities to attend this meeting, Internet is uh, is a saving, uh, it's a greater ease. Anyway, it's user friendly. We do this as uh, best we can, and also we do it in the best interest of shareholders because we always want to keep costs down where possible. And this is why uh, internet is toppling uh, a written. Uh, uh, a written invitation, um, the law is being properly abided by, and it costs less. Anyway, I do apologize that the invitation was sent to you by Internet, but I do think this is a trend which won't be unwoven. Anyway, I would like to reiterate the point that I would like to see you very much here next year. Are there any further comments? Yes, there's a gentleman in the middle there. Um, sign number four. Uh, Chair, Mr. Chairman, two brief questions. Let me introduce myself. I'm an individual shareholder, and this for a very, very great number of years. In France, uh, there are not for profit associations, associations called, such as Affair, uh, a not for profit. And there's Aviva, and there's AGP as well. And this, then there's Gepard. This is an insurer that belongs to Alliance. Could you tell us how those linkages exist when you think about life insurance? Uh, AGP, that's headed up by Claude Fat, and you, a massive insurance company. That's my first question. My second question. A month back, you spoke uh, to uh, the Echo magazine on the 4th of September, it was. And at the time, I put a question to you. It was very topical uh, about, I won't say threats, but at least recommendations made by public authorities of funding SMEs through life insurance, funding for uh, SMEs and the construction industry. So if you wouldn't mind your answer to those two points. Well, let me start by answering the second part of the question. Then I'll be turned to Nicolas Moreau, because he, he heads up our French businesses and the relationship between companies and insurance associations. But it's a very independent uh, relationship, just to put it in a nutshell. But anyway, I'll let him comment on that in more detail. In the second part of your question, you allude to discussions or draft reforms on the, on the uh, tax status of life insurance in France. And, and the Berger Lefebvre report, as it's become famous. Anyway, these recommendations in, in the report, well, you have to wait and see whether these re recommendations are uh, are taken up by uh, the majority in Parliament or not. <laughs> so it's, there's a question mark hanging over that at this point in time, but it strikes me 
that ha we have been supported by the finance ministry, but um, it does keep most of the, the balance, if you like, between life insurance uh, and tax uh, no, it announces a certain number of avenues. In other words, a, the tax incentive could change based on the degree of risk borne by the uh, policyholder. Now, when uh, contracts have capital guarantees at a given point of time, the degree of risk is much lower than when the, a, cus a customer is invested in a unit accounts that can go up and down based on the underlying. So the report is saying, well, you should retain the advantages on contracts that are built on unit accounts, and is suggesting creating a product that will be similar to what we called Euro diversified or Euro growth products that will retain the same benefits. But we could envisage a cap on uh, Euro denominated mainstream contracts. Now, in total, even though, of course, certain fears were quite well. There were quite deep-seated fears about uh, deep-seated changes in life insurance tax provisions. But I think the balance should be retained across the board. Now there are two points that you alluded to, um, I believe, and these are points that we need to be careful about because things may seem a bit ambiguous if you don't keep care to this. Now the about 15 billion euros is the life insurance market. Maybe that could be used to fund uh, government policies. Now, now, if we're thinking about uh, uh, making it possible for policyholders and at their uh, free choice to invest part of their savings in uh, products invested in SMEs or social housing, well, why not? That's their choice. That would increase the number of underlyings. Now, if everybody is free to choose, and if this is done based on on somebody's ap risk appetite and their own uh, assets allocation desires, well, there's no reason why we should pit ourselves against that. But if it's not that, if it's simply to have uh, one's arm forced, in other words, when you sink a hundred units, let's say, into a, a Euro croissance contract, then automatically you'll be forced to put some money in funding social housing or or developing SMEs. Well, and this irrespective of your risk appetite, irrespective of your asset position as a whole, well then, no, we don't want that. We wouldn't be against that. That's it. That's what I'd say, just to uh, put it things in a nutshell. But there's a, a certain amount of ambiguity about this, lots of blurred edges. Um, but I hope that we won't exit this tunnel, if you like, at our detriment. Would you like to answer this? Well, AJP is an association of independent insurance groups, as underscored by you. We are the uh, insurer partner of AJP ever since it was formed about uh, 30 years ago, and therefore we have business relationship with that association, which are very tight. We ensure the distribution of the AGP instruments into our networks, whether ADP, life, uh, uh, or uh, tied agent networks, and we carry the risk with them. We hold talks on uh, product prices, on the yields or returns on investments, the euro funds, uh, so that uh, we have very close relationships, but the AGP's governance as such and its own uh, governance. Well, we are minority uh, in their on their board. The um, shareholders meetings, uh, 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 their uh, shareholders meetings appoint their uh, directors every year. Question. Next question. Yes, sir. Patrick Rezo, I represent Danaf. Two questions. My first question uh, bears upon the uh, 
the AXA uh, portfolio with mainly 80% uh, bonds. Uh, rates are historically low nowadays with a risk in case of a stronger rise of rates. What will be the impact of a uh, rise of 1% in terms of the impact on your equity? Now, the second question which you had put in writing regarding the goodwill, what is the amount of good values that the ax of the AXA group, what is their percentage relative to the equity, and are you seeing any impairments in 2013? On the questions that you had raised in writing, the answer can be found on the website. It's in the, by the way, you can find it in the uh, reading of the report. I will, is it page 330, I believe, of the report? Would you like to give an answer on the rate related risk? In the report, you will find in the risk section a document which explains the value of our life-related contracts. And there's a sensitivity on page 162 where it is indicated that the value of our contracts would increase, that is, the embedded value would increase by 3% for an increase of 100 basis points of the uh, riskless rate. Now, the way we manage uh, risks in life and in non-life are such is that we have a very long duration, which is supposed to offset, if you wish, uh, the uh, liabilities. So we have very little variation between assets or liabilities. In case of a rise in rates, we would have anyway a positive effect. Denis Duvern will quickly give you the elements your questions in writing, which are on the website, but can be found also in the annual report on uh, on the goodwill at the end of December, page 217, 15 billion, 754 million representing 28% of equity, which amounted to 56 billion at the same date. And you asked the question about the trend in 2013. Well, uh, the goodwills in 2013 will depend on the financial markets and uh, our operations. So we cannot say at the beginning of 2013 whether or not there will be adjustments that will need to be made on goodwill in 2013. Next question. Question. Next to panel number seven, Jean-Marie Darabé, individual shareholder. I would like to make an observation on employee uh, shareholders. I read in the reference document, which is a very good one, by the way, congratulations, uh, that you have about 7.4% of your uh, equity kept held by employee shareholders. It's a good figure. Uh, if you look at the CAC 40, there are companies such as L'Oréal at 0.7% of the total capital held by their employees. And what I admire with you is that you also increase your capital or you offer them every year when others such as Technip also only propose them every four years. However, during the last capital increase in December, I read that 18% only of employees uh, accepted and they wrote, can you do better? Can you further motivate your uh, French or foreign employees to underwrite? It's a sign of belonging first, and it's also a sign of uh, trust they have about uh, the group and its future. Thank you, sir for this question and for your comments. <clears throat> yes, it is true. We consider that the fact of offering on a regular basis to our employees to participate in the development of the group through this capital increase is part of our DNA. That's something that Claude Bébéa had put in place, which is now has been in place for uh, several years. We are very happy to see that employees actually behind the mutuals are the first shareholders of the group. Now. Uh, the participation in this mechanism varies from year to year, but the fund, it's about 300 million euros each year which are uh, supplied by employees to the group. 
which is a quite a decent amount. The participation rate varies very much depending on the culture in every country. Certainly, it tends to be a bit stronger in places where we have been for a long time. It is diluted a bit because there are a number of countries where the headcount is rapidly growing, in particular in emerging countries, but where the shareholders' culture is not necessarily yet uh, highly developed, nor necessarily uh, the means of the employees. Even if we feel we are a model employer, they are not uh, sufficient so that they can immediately think about that form of savings, be certain that we're doing our best so that this operation each year is a success. We believe that our formulas that we've developed is one with a capital guarantee and part of the upside and another formula which is riskier, but where the return in case of success is stronger. These two formulas represent a good uh, balance, and that's something that we wish to continue to expand. But this is something that all the heads of the group look at uh, with close attention because it's in an indirect way of lo measuring, engaging uh, en uh, en engagement. It, we make sure that also among employee representatives, uh, some of them here, that there are questions on the share price which are not very different from the questions raised here. It's a good way, we believe, of aligning the various interests. Are there other questions or comments? Number five. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Jean Berton, President of the AFEDER. I would like to add something to what was said about the SGP. SGP is part, has been part for a long time of the AFEDER, and we are very happy of this. We represent all independ the independent associations that defend uh, people who save for uh, their pension, their retirement. My question is about the breakdown of uh, you've shown us a very small uh, percentage of investment in equities. Is it due to the strategy and how you see the financial markets in the future, or is it due to regulatory requirements now or in the future, especially solvency too? I have in mind, and also you have always been uh, looking uh, for excellence. You were able to achieve it, so uh, c c reconsider your slides on the performance of 2012. There's a slight mistake, uh, spelling mistake. Oh, my God, a spelling mistake. Thank you very much. We will uh, seek it and offer a Pichon Longville bottle uh, to the person who will point it out now on the overall uh, asset. It's a very relevant question. Denis? Yes. The power of uh, equities in the overall assets of the group has dramatically declined in the course of the 12 or 13 past years. It was at about 20 percent in 2000, up until between 2004 and 2007, it was around 10 percent, and now, since 2009, it's hovering around 3 and 4 percent. I believe there are three uh, ways to explain this. The first way is that we've been through, in the past 13 years, two major crises in the financial markets, very strong in Europe. Twice, the shares dropped by uh, 60 percent, and when these shares are uh, driven uh, f are when the risk is not shared between the policyholders and the uh, shareholders, the decline in equities uh, translates immediately into a decline in the equity of the company. Therefore, appetite for uh, uh, risk for equities due to these two crises has certainly diminished among all European insurance groups in this way. But this decrease in uh, the share of equities took place uh, in the 80s among U.S. insurers for regulatory reasons with the introduction of uh, 
the so-called RBC uh, standards. And the second reason behind the decline of equities is the introduction of the IFRS uh, uh, standards, which have been enforced since 2005, and they result in uh, charges to be taken or uh, impairments on a sustainable uh, basis which are far stricter than the standards in the past. In the past, when there was an impairment uh, or a write-down, there would be a target uh, share price in the midterm, and it, a charge would be taken in reference not to the uh, market value. And with the IFRS, the rules are stricter when a, uh, a share uh, has d dropped for over uh, 20 percent in six months, or we have to impair it, write it down. And you see this in the uh, equity. And the third uh, reason, which you mentioned indirectly, is the closeness of the Solvency II standard, which should be implemented probably in 2016 as part of Solvency II. Uh, the capital adequacy uh, or rec is based on uh, our balance sheets on the mon money ma mark to market and also the variation of the value of that balance sheet uh, with a probability of 0.5% per annum. That is a crisis uh, every 200 years. In that case, we are forced to take the uh, capital adequacy for equities about 40% of the amount of equities in our portfolio. So if we have 100 euros of equities in our portfolio, we must have about 40 in capital. So holding uh, equities in the balance sheet requires a lot of capital. It's very costly. These are the three reasons why we have 3% of equities in our portfolio. We are increasing that. Uh, percentage this year but if we do this we would move to three from three to four percent but we wouldn't be back to the levels we had over ten years ago uh, is there uh, another question or uh one last question Yes, sir, you want to say something again. When uh, I speak, people pay me, but now it's free of charge. I would like to know or uh, provide some pieces of information on all these proposals uh, regarding uh, insurance made by banks, like BNP, uh, Credit Lyonnais. Are these direct competitors, because you want to reinvent your business, are the, uh, your direct competitors uh, and the prices are much better, or is it a way to attract, because you also have a bank, uh, as AXA you have a bank. Can you give us further details on uh, the link between the, the bank and the insurance group and our bank? Well. Sometimes they are competitors, sometimes allies. Crédit Agricole, for instance, uh, are competitors on the ground for our agents very often. Uh, these competitors are uh, tough. However, the PNC insurance business of BNP is a, an association between AXA and uh, the BNP, so you're raising the overall issue of the way the bank insurance is exercised, is carried out, it exists in France and across every other market. The banking networks are very close to clients, uh, to people who save, therefore banks have developed in a number of cases uh, some insurance business, sometimes by being owners of companies that operate or sometimes by having distribution agreements or by having specific partnerships with insurance groups. And we know the three forms of that possible uh, association in France as well as abroad and in emerging countries, by the way, our ability to distribute insurance uh, vehicles through uh, banking uh, networks is helping us expand there. So this should be a lasting. What we hope is that uh, the conditions that prevail in uh, competition are honest 
and balance. We want to make sure that regulators ask from bankers the same level of capital than the one that is required from us for insurance purposes, which is not yet totally the case. Hopefully, it will uh, become so. No, AXA Bank, Nicola, would you like to say a word about this? To add to this, bankers are not necessarily more competitive with their offers because they have to pay uh, significant networks. We've developed AXA Bank uh, from a direct bank called Bank Direct, by the way, which was bought out from BNP Paribas about 10 years ago. So we connected that bank onto our distribution networks with our tied agents. It enables our tied agents to make a, a comprehensive offer in savings, but also be able to provide loans, uh, consumer loans or uh, other. In that way, they can uh, secure their customers, have more frequent contacts with them, and fight with equal weapons with banks. And therefore, we are developing this offer in France. We have about 800 insurer bankers with about 3,800 tied agents. So it's part of the network. But 800 uh, uh, banking uh, branches in France is a, quite a substantial uh, network. Une dernière... A last question. All right. Well, if there are no further questions. What I suggest is that we move to the voting of our resolutions. But I need to remind you what the final quorum is. We've got 9,025 represented, representing 1.45 million total representatives. So we've got a quorum for our work. So Denis de Verne is going to present, how, present you how the vote will be conducted with this particular device. Now, you've got a personalized uh, ele electronic device. The screen enables you to, uh, well, tells you how many votes you have. And to vote, you need to press firmly on one of the buttons abstaining or against once the vote has been opened. And then your vote in a few seconds will appear on your screen, on your device. And please confine yourself to one vote per resolution. And of course, if you don't press on any um, button, then it will be assumed you abstain and abstention is a, is a vote against. Um, and then please hand in your devices after this session, and please turn off your cell phones during the voting procedure. So now we're going to be moving to the votes of the resolutions that feature on the agenda of our meeting. So you're being asked to vote. If I could just have the next screen, please, to vote on 24 resolutions, 11 for uh, the ordinary shareholders meeting and the remaining for uh, non-ordinary, the extraordinary. So the first resolution is the approval of the company's financial statements for the fiscal year 2012. The vote is now open. The voting is closed. So the resolution is carried. The second resolution, uh, the approval of the consolidated financial statements for the fiscal year 2012. The vote is open. The voting is now over. So this res resolution is carried as well. Third resolution, 
earnings appropriation for the fiscal year 2012 and declaration of a dividend of 72 euro cents per share. The vote is now open. Voting is now over. So the resolution has been approved. The fourth resolution, approval of regulated agreements pursuant to Article L225-38 of the French Commercial Code. The voting is now open. Voting is now over. The resolution has been carried. The fifth resolution, the reappointment of Mr. Roman de Oliveira as director for a four-year period. Voting is open. Voting is now closed. The resolution is duly approved. Sixth resolution, the reappointment of Mrs. Dominique Reniche as director for a four-year term. The voting is open. Voting is now over. This resolution is duly adopted. The seventh resolution, ratification of the co-optation of Mr. Jean-Pierre Clamadieu as director for a term of office equal to the residual amount remaining from the previous bearer. Voting is over, is open rather. Voting is over. This uh, resolution is carried. The eighth resolution, appointment of Mrs. Dina Oppenheimer as director for a four-year term. The voting is now open. Voting is over. The resolution is carried. So the ninth resolution, appointment of Mr. Paul Hermelin as director for a four-year period. The voting is open. Voting is closed. Resolution is carried. Tenth resolution, setting of the annual amount of director's fees allocated to the members of the board of directors and to bring it to 1,365,000 euros. 1,350,000 euros. Correct is, corrects the interpreter. Voting is now open. Voting is now over. Resolution is adopted. The 11th resolution, authorization given to the board of directors in order to purchase ordinary shares of the company 
uh, limit of 10% of capital for a maximal unit price per purchase of purchase price rather per action of 35 euros for a period of 18 months. The vote is now open. Voting is now closed. This resolution is carried. The next 13 resolutions fall under the extraordinary shareholders' meeting scope. So the next resolution involves delegation of authority granted to the board of directors to increase the share capital through the capitalization of reserves, earnings, or premiums for uh, a total of 1 billion euros, equating to around 83.3% of total shareholder equity uh, for the dur duration of the delegation spanning 26 months. The voting is open. Voting is now closed. This resolution is carried. The 13th resolution, delegation of authority granted to the board of directors to increase the share capital of the company by issuing ordinary shares or securities given a claim to ordinary shares of the company or one of its subsidiaries with preferential subscription rights of the, subs of the shareholders with a minimal amount of 2 billion euros, oh, sorry, a maximum uh, nominal amount for capital increase of 2 billion euros, equating to 36.6% of total shareholders' equity over a period, a delegation period of 26 months, the voting is open. Voting is closed. Resolution is carried. 14th resolution. Delegation of authority granted to the Board of Directors to increase the share capital of the cap company by issuing ordinary shares of securities given a claim to ordinary shares of the company or one of its subsidiaries without preferential subscription rights of the shareholders in case of, a pub of public offerings. A maximum sum, nominal sum for capital increase of 545 million euros, equated to 10% of total shareholders' equity over a delegation period of 26 months. The voting is open. Voting is closed. Resolution duly approved. Fifteenth resolution, delegation of authority granted to the Board of Directors to increase the share capital of the company by issuing ordinary shares or securities given a claim to ordinary shares of the company or one of its subsidiaries without preferential subscription rights of the shareholders or through pri private placements as uh, set forth in Article L411-22 of the uh, French Monetary and Financial Code for a minimum uh, sorry, a maximum nominal amount for capital increase of 455 million euros, equated to 10% of, of um, shareholders' capital for a delegation period of 26 months. Voting is open. Voting is over. Resolution carried. Sixteenth resolution, authorization granted to the board of directors to set in the event of an issue of shares through public offerings or private placements without preferential subscription rights of the shareholders at the issue price under the conditions defined by the shareholders meeting up to a maximum of 10% of the share capital. With a maximum discount of 5%, vote is open. Voting is closed. Well, the resolution is being carried. 17th resolution delegation of authority to grant to the board of directors to increase the capital, uh, the share capital rather, by issuing ordinary shares or securities given a claim to the company's ordinary shares in the event of a public exchange offer initiated by the company. 
with a cap of 545 million euros as a nominal figure for a 26-month period. The voting is open. Voting is closed. Resolution is adopted. 18th resolution delegation of authority granted the board of directors to increase the share capital of the company by issuing ordinary shares or securities given a claim to ordinary shares by the company in return for contributions in kind up to a maximum of 10% of the share capital outside a public exchange offer initiated by the company with a cap of 545 million euros and uh, a period of 26 months for the delegation. Voting is open. Voting is closed. It's duly carried. 19th resolution. Delegation of authority granted the Board of Directors to issue without preferential subscription rights of the shareholders ordinary shares resulting from the issue or issue by subsidiaries of the company or of securities giving a claim to the company's ordinary shares. With the same cap of 545 million euros as a nominal figure for a 26 month period, voting is open. Voting is closed. Resolution carried. Twentieth resolution. Delegation of authority granted the Board of Directors for the purpose of issuing securities which give the right to an allotment of debt instruments without increasing the company's share capital. A nominal cap of two billion euros, twenty six month duration. The voting is open. Voting is closed. <laughs> Duly carried. 21st resolution, delegation of power grant to the Board of Directors to increase the share capital by issuing sh ordinary shares or securities given a claim to the company's ordinary shares reserved for employees enrolled in an employer-sponsored employer company savings plan without preferential subscription rights of the shareholders with a nominal figure which is a, a ceiling of 135 million euros, delegation period 18 months. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Resolution carried. The 22nd resolution, delegation of power granted to the board of directors to increase the share capital of the company by issuing ordinary shares without preferential subscription rights of the shareholders in favor of a specific category of beneficiaries. The cap, a nominal cap of 135 million euros and a delegation period of 18 months. The voting is open. Voting is closed. Resolution is adopted. Uh, 23rd resolution, authorization granted to the Board of Directors, reduce the ca share capital through the cancellation of ordinary shares to a maximum of 10% of, of equity. Uh, authorization period, 18 months. Voting is open.
Voting is over. Resolution carried. 24th and last resolution, authorization to comply with all formal requirements in connection with the shareholders' meeting. Vote is open. Voting is closed. Resolution is carried. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. And I'll hand over once again to Mr. De Castro. Thank you. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention and for bearing with us. Now, next year, the shareholders' meeting should be placing on April 23rd. And nothing being on the agenda left, we now uh, close the meeting.